Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Juliet, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we dive into the content, let me cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple engagement tools you can use. All tools are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your presentation area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any audio or video issues, you can find answers to some common technical issues located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. Please note that a copy of today's slide deck and additional resources are available in the resource list. Please have a look and download everything that you may find useful. Also, the webinar will be recorded and sent via the email you registered with. Lastly, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We are here to answer you live via the chat, so don't hesitate to reach out throughout the presentation. Now, I'll pass it over to our speaker today, Preston Mitchell. Well, thank you, Julia. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, my name is Preston. It's great to be here. I'm the VP of our solutions department at Java Software, and I lead our rockstar team that delivers solutions and services for all of Java Software's customers. Uh, I've been with JAMA for over 10 years and held several positions within the company. And over the course of my time here, you know, through hundreds of client engagements uh, to onboard and deploy JAMA Kick, I have learned a lot from our customers. And our customers really are our inspiration. You know, they're building the next generation products like self-driving cars, life-saving medical devices, futuristic robots. Um, and the thread that ties all of these customers together is the central theme of how can we make better decisions to improve the success rate of our R&D function or our product development function. So I'm really excited to talk to you all today about the theme of managing through data to do just that. You know, how can we bring measurable improvement to your process? So for the agenda today, we're gonna to talk about the power of data, uh, how Java software empowers our customers to use data and exception management, and some key measurements that we prioritize, such as requirements quality and the traceability score. And, and then finally, we'll close out with how you can plan for success in this and just some uh, Q&A from the audience. So do, you know, we'll have my, uh, my colleagues helping out with the chat. Uh, Juliet's gonna uh, share some of the questions, so don't hesitate to use the chat to uh, ask questions. All right, so it should be obvious to most, but managing through data brings several benefits to your organization. You know, software is a part of our day-to-day -day work and it's enabled an exponential increase in collaboration and visibility. Um, and increasing visibility to that critical data and the workflows allows teams to have a more shared understanding of the goals, the problems, the action items that all go into making successful products. Um, and this, you know, rolling up this data allows the R&D and product development leaders to have more real-time metrics uh, and make better business decisions. So when you start to manage through data, you know, this increased visibility really encourages process improvement and also really professional growth. But at the same time, there's a challenge that comes along with this, right? This increase in the amount of data that's available often is overwhelming. Um, given that the time that you have in a day is really a fixed resource. So, you know, we want to make this a little bit interactive. I'd be curious to hear from the audience, how do you use, or maybe how do you not use, data today in your decision-making with regards to developing new products? So, Juliet, why don't we pull up our first poll? Um, what's the primary method that your organization uses for major decisions in the development of the products and systems that you build. So we'll give folks about 20 seconds to answer this. Okay, and I see some interesting results coming in here so far. Well, I, I know it's hard to, to pick just one primary as the reality is, is there's likely multiple of these here for really large decisions. I was actually kind of wondering uh, you know, how many folks would actually pick the first and the last option, you know, intuition or just plain not sure. So let, let's move forward here. Um, 
I have linked a very uh, interesting, it's kind of old, but it's still very relevant, a very interesting Harvard Business Review article called Don't Trust Your Gut. And I highly recommend uh, checking this out. You can just uh, search for it real quick on the internet. But if I were to summarize it, intuition is often uh, glorified quite a bit in the business world, and especially when people are wildly successful. So for example, if you make a big business or a personal bet that pays off, these are often celebrated. But in business, we, we hear a lot about failures too. And they're often blamed on things like poor timing, poor market fit, uh, maybe uh, you know, a lot of it is poor execution. But one adjacent failure symptom is the lack of an alarm to trigger a change. So we often hear the old adage, you know, it's better to fail fast than early, uh, so you have a chance to course correct. With the right data and the right alarm triggers, this is possible. Uh, and the customers that Java Software works with, you know, you have smart engineers, product managers, and business analysts. Oftentimes, bias and emotions they can play a, a real role in in making bad decisions that eventually lead to some sort of a R and D or product development failure. And when your engineering leaders or even uh, yourself don't have the data on execution progress, when your teams are not actually tracing requirements to the why or the need for customer validation, and when we don't have insight into things like verification coverage, all that missing data, you know, you're going to find that we've, we, we encounter these problems way too late in the development cycle. And we, we see this very often in the news, you know, these failures that happen too late. Investigations happen, recommendations are made, but how can we make uh, you know, data available to the right people so that you can prevent these issues from ever occurring in the first place? So that's what we're going to talk more about today. And as the famed management guru, Peter Drucker said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So being able to use data to measure allows your team to see recurring patterns or anomalies. And then individuals can then take care of these before they become a larger problem. Or better yet, how can we create preventative measures and automation to improve the process overall? So that leads us to the key principle that we're going to talk about today, uh, management by exception. So management by exception is a methodology that's really meant to empower your team with the data around early warning indicators so that you can make smarter and faster decisions. It also allows leadership to focus on their time on the exceptions and not micromanaging or intervening with the teams if the majority of the engineering data shows that the product development is going as expected. And I really want to reemphasize that because it's not meant to micromanage. In fact, it should lessen that. A common hurdle that teams face, you know, when you introduce a change where you're transforming the organization by managing through data is resistance. Uh, resistance, resistance to change is, is something that I encounter a lot, even so far as, you know, you're implementing a new tool, you're implementing a new process. And with management by data, oftentimes teams feel like they're being measured solely on process rather than the value that they're delivering. I want to really reemphasize that that's not the case and not the idea behind management by exception. The idea is that so you can have less manual asks, you know, less status updates, less TPS reports, less manual things. So I want to get that misconception out of the way. Managing by data and managing by exceptions is actually meant to lessen the day-to-day -day managerial involvement or intervention. And ideally, when teams are aligned on the important metrics and the process triggers, um, they manage by exception themselves. So again, you see here some real world examples. You think, you know, a very obvious one is the hospital, a vital, a patient's vital sign. If a heart rate drops or rises significantly, then alarm is going to sound to bring the attention to nurses and doctors. But if there's no alarm, then that means the vital signs are in the region of acceptability. So this is like a very common example of management by exception. 